everyone and welcome to Writer Smellin. I'm Sonali and I will be taking you through some amazing Pride Month book recommendations for you. A quick reminder that Pride Month should not be the only month in which you read queer books. We need to read queer stories and we need to celebrate our uh, queer fellows throughout the year. So please keep these recommendations in mind and continue to read more queer stories throughout the year. The world celebrates Pride Month in June to honor the 1969 Stonewall Uprising of Manhattan, which was a huge step for the gay liberation movement. So to celebrate Pride Month, we are uh, recommending to you 15 books with queer stories that are simply amazing to say the least. And uh, we hope that you will take these recommendations and that you will read these stories, you will learn something from them and that you will enjoy them as much as we did. And yeah, since there are 15 books, let's get right on with it and let's start with these book recommendations. First up is a book that I recommend throughout the year irrespective of time, irrespective of place and I think that this book is one that everybody should should read because of how beautiful it is. The book I'm talking about is The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. Madeline Miller in this book she talks about uh, Achilles and Patroclus as we know uh, throughout history people and historians have said that Achilles and Patroclus were just close friends and they were cousins and whatnot but in fact they were lovers and when you read this book you get a lot of greek mythology you get a lot of angst you get a lot of brilliant writing and combine all of these you have this intense urge to cry because of what is happening in this book madeline miller's writing does that to you it causes your emotions to bubble up and come out especially if you are a lover of Greek mythology, then read Madeline Miller's books. Her research is impeccable. Plus, the way she brings all of these mythological figures to life is just simply brilliant. Next up is Loveless by Alice Oseman. This is a story of Georgia who just can't seem to fall in love. So when she starts questioning herself, her, when she starts questioning her identity, she realizes a lot of things and terms like asexual, aromantic, they, uh, they start coming into her um, dictionary and they start making more sense to her and then she realizes who she is and what part of her identity is. And this book is simply brilliant. Like the way Alice Oseman has written Georgia and the way it she has filled these pages with angst and the need, the urge to find someone to be with yourself without having any expectations and to be accepted as someone who doesn't want romance, who doesn't want uh, sex, who, who is not interested in all of it but how she places stress on the importance of friendship and, and how friendship can be an equally or even more powerful bond is just this book brings it out so beautifully and this warm witty funny book this story is one that you should definitely read because it throws light on so many of these topics next is queeristan by parmesh shahani this talks about lgbtqia plus inclusion in the indian workplace this is non-fiction and uh, parmesh shahani who is uh, who works for godrej and he has opened the godrej india culture lab if i'm not mistaken uh, he talks about how to make uh, workplace indian workplaces more inclusive for lgbtqia plus people to make workplaces comfortable to make uh, workplaces safe places for queer people is something that is very important in today's uh, time and age and he lists out a lot of reasons a lot of ways in which this can be done and a lot of places that are inclusive at the moment and those which can be inclusive it's, it's a very well written book that i would say and uh, it's very informative it takes some time to get into but then the points that the author is making seem very easy to implement. I, I know there are a lot of obstacles and there are a lot of things that we need to consider before doing anything in this part but the way uh, Parmesh Shahani has written this book it will if you are looking to do something like this then pick this book up and use it as a guide. It is simply brilliant. Next is 
Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. This is the story of Alex, who is the first son of the United States. He is the son of the first female president of the United States and Henry, who is a British prince. They fall in love with each other. I mean, there's no getting around that fact. That's not a spoiler of any sort but uh, this is how they fall in love with each other and how each being in positions of privilege as well as in positions of power they are helpless in the face of what expectations are placed on their shoulders and what the world sees of them and i really love this because of how witty how funny and how warm in a lot of places that this book is and there's a lot of drama in the way royalty is treated in this book there's also a movie coming out uh, i don't know i think it's 2023 or uh, I, I don't know which year it's going to be released in but amazon is producing it and uh, i think they've begun filming as well so this is one that i would also definitely highly recommend Next up is Felix Ever After by Kaysen Calendar. Felix is a trans man and uh, he ends up at school one day and finds that his dead name is all over the place. And somebody is doing this for what reason he doesn't know and now he has to, he, he wants to find out who exactly it is. And while he is grappling with his identity, he is also falling in love and now he has to handle both of these lives. Felix Ever After is a beautifully written story and I don't think we see, see a lot of stories about black black trans teens and uh, I feel like Case and Calendar has done a fabulous job with it. Uh, I only feel about this book that it's a little too dragged but other than that it's a fabulous book it is very informative which is not a burden on the author but uh, it does do it and it's educative and I, I think that's why felix ever after is a book that you should definitely read next up is cobalt blue by sachin gundalkar and translated into english by uh, jerry pinto this novel was originally written in marathi this story is about two siblings one a uh, man who is uh, who wants to be a writer and the other is a woman who is a sort of a free spirit these two siblings they fall in love with a man a paying guest who has put up at their house everything their whole life seems to be rocked and uh, their thoughts their feelings the uh, the way they come to terms with it all forms this entire story and i found it to be a really uh, understated way of bringing the story to the fore. Jerry Pinto's translation is simply atmospheric. It transports you into that into that house. It feels like you are sitting right there and watching as the siblings fall in love and the feelings that they are going through and everything. And I, I do think that for Indian literature to have this book, it's a huge thing and uh, it should be celebrated and it should be read by more people as well. Next up is A Burning by Megha Majumdar. This book uh, follows the story of corruption and injustice and everything and how uh, the state, the government cracks down on those who as much as just speak out against them but in this book there are three characters three main characters that we follow one is jeevan who is accused of uh, being hand in hand with terrorists when all she did was call, say something on facebook posts against what the government did and then there is uh, jeevan's uh, pt sir and then there is Lovely, who we are going to base this recommendation on about. Lovely is a hijra who has dreams of becoming a movie star. She goes out into the world every day with full of enthusiasm and optimism and uh, prepared to take on anything that the day is about to throw at her. Uh, and uh, now she also has to decide whether she wants to stand up for Jeevan. Lovely's parts throughout this book are what make this book. Her way of speaking is not something that uh, English speakers would speak that way but then that that's what makes it more enduring and it is exactly for lovely that I would recommend that you read A Burning by Megha Majumdar because of how impactful it can be. Next up is The Death of Vivek Oji by Akweke Emezi. This is set in Nigeria and it follows uh, the life of Vivek Oji. It starts off, the story starts off with Vivek Oji's death and then it goes back and forth between timelines telling us about how uh, Vivek got to that point because uh, it's a whole different story about how Vivek 
uh, started to form close friendships with more women and how he was beginning to discover himself and his gender and his sexuality as well and uh, how it all ends in a in violence and how it brought about the death of Vivek Oji uh, forms the entire stories and how in Nigeria homosexuality is a criminal offense and how it affects gay people how it affects queer people as a whole as well as to have that burden of staying in the closet a quick amazing writing their writing is simply brilliant this is not a long book by any uh, measure but it still leaves you with such a such an impact that you, you just want to go back and read it again and you just want to go and give vivek a big hug next up is all boys aren't blue by george m johnson this is a non fiction memoir of sorts of george m johnson and he talks about uh, his growing up in uh, new jersey and virginia if i'm not mistaken and in these essays that george m johnson has written and collated he he directs all of this to towards black queer people who might not have people in their lives to direct them to help them with their journey he also talks about some very important but disturbing topics like sexual abuse and rape the audiobook for this is simply great and i would re recommend that you listen to the audiobook uh, i mean you could read the book as well but combine it if you can and uh, it it's going to be a great experience next up is swimming in the dark by thomas jedrowski and this is the story of two boys who meet in poland in 1980 and who fall in love but the political situation in the country is such that it's a criminal offense to be homo or to be a homosexual person and among all of this now these two boys have to make a decision uh, about what they are willing to give up or uh, are they willing to give themselves up are they willing to give each other up in order to survive in that situation because the party is about to get them to do a lot of things that they might not agree with but in order to survive they have to and with, that is the angst of the story that is what it all brings because you see the love you see the uh, uh, pining for each other the longing for each other but the political situation what exactly is it going to get these two to do please do read this book it's great and it will give you an idea about how things were in 1980 especially since poland was just getting out of the world war 2 haze and i feel like this is one that paints that picture pretty starkly and in a very honest manner Next up is You Will Be Safe Here by Damien Barr. This has a dual timeline. A one is set in 1901 during the Boer War when British troops uh, forced people into concentration camps and with the assurance that they would be safe there. But we all know and we've heard stories of concentration camps. And from there we jump to 2010 where we follow Willem who is a uh, um, who who wants to be the kind of man that his mother wants him to be but obviously if you cannot deny your own identity so his mother and his, her boyfriend they send him to a camp throughout all of this jemin bar in this books he talks about the horrors of colonialism and what has gone on behind the victories that the british have claimed for themselves and it's gut wrenching to see willem go away to that training camp in which he is supposed to get it get uh, his homosexuality beaten out of him it's just so vividly written but it's also written in a manner that calls out all of these so that's why damian bar's writing makes for such uh, a gripping narrative and uh, it tells you it teaches you a lot of things while you go through the story next is the color purple by alice walker this is one of the main the cornerstones of uh black literature queer literature as well and it won the pulitzer prize for fiction in 1983 i think this is an epistolary novel which talks about two african american women in the early 20th century in rural georgia and uh, it is told in the form of letters first from uh, the older sister selly to god uh, in which she talks about how her own father rapes her and uh, sexually assaults her abuses her and uh, then it goes on to uh, the two sisters selly and netty uh, communicating with each other and how their lives as well as the lives of the women around them they begin to change and morph it forms the entire story and this is just a very small 
gist of what the story is about because there's so much more it talks about sexual abuse it talks about the struggles of women uh, and what goes on behind the doors and what was deemed acceptable and uh, what was never spoken about this book is one of the most culturally important books to have ever come out of the 20th century it's been an important book it is an important book and it will be an important book next up is a giant of a book which is the priory of the orange tree by samantha shannon look at how thick it is this is this story has uh, dragons and uh, wyverns and whatnot the it follows three main characters one is the queen who has to uh, give birth to a daughter in order for the matriarchal lineage to continue to for the next queen to be born and then there's Eid who is a uh, who has now come up to be a lady in waiting and then there's Tane who is a dragon rider and uh, there are old forces that are coming back into this world which they thought were dead and long gone by they are coming back into this world and now they have to do something in order to contain those forces it's an 800 page book but in this high fantasy you will not know how the time is flying because of how action-packed every single uh, page is and there's also a, a female female romance in here which I, it's old news so it's not a spoiler or anything this is a great 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 book uh, fantasy for you to get into if you're intimidated by this please don't be intimidated by the size of this book because it is fast paced and you will be able to get through it next is a short a uh, book of poems called Two Girls in Love by Ankita Singh. This is a collection of poetic diary entries in which the uh, author is talking about two girls in love and uh, in tandem with the uh, section 377 being ruled as unconstitutional, how this, uh, the story of these two girls in love comes about forms this entire book. It's really heartwarming to read especially because uh, when you see that uh, external events like uh, such legal events like uh, the section 377 being uh, overturned is sort of gives uh, women courage to come out and talk about their own true selves with their families and to be comfortable in their skin in that way it was beautiful to read and i think that the size of this book should not uh, figure in the way that it has an impact on the reader as a whole last but not the least is a book that the world loves it feels like the book is called simon versus the homo sapiens agenda by becky albatali this is the story of teenager simon spear who is gay but he has not told the world about it but uh, his emails with someone called blue fall into the wrong hands and now that person called martin is blackmailing him because he wants simon to do something for him but now with all of this in the equation it becomes a sort of a mess because his relationship his equation with his friends and uh, with uh, the people around him it starts to change twist and turn and everything else and now simon has to think of a way to get through all of this without hurting anybody he loves this is a simple book it's a young adult fiction which you can read you can fly through it's very fast paced it's very the language is, to, is very easy to read what it talks about about how uh, queer people are forced to come out of the closet when nobody else when straight people don't have that pressure on their shoulders why is it always gay people why is it always queer people who have to declare themselves why can't we just be who we are it's light it's fun it's witty i uh, there are the character interactions are simply wonderful they are warm and the friendships are wonderful and it, it's just so full of life so those were the 15 book recommendations that we had for you today what did you think of these recommendations have you read any of these what are your thoughts on them let us know in the comments below we would love to hear from you please don't forget to like this video share it in your circles and also most importantly subscribe to writers melon so that uh, you can keep up with uh, the v content that we are coming up with there's going to be a lot of fresh new content coming your way so we will see you in the next video until next time, bye-bye.